Anti-lock brakes have been available on Buicks for some time. Traction control, however, is a relative newcomer. Whenever a vehicle accelerates, its drive wheels must spin slightly against the road to accelerate. This wheel spin is referred to as slip. This vehicle is exhibiting a slip level of about 100%. The desired slip for best acceleration is between 5 and 20%. On Park Avenue and LeSaver, the anti-lock brakes are used to provide traction control. In order to understand traction control, a firm understanding of anti-lock brakes is essential. A computer constantly monitors four wheel speed sensors. During braking, if the computer detects one wheel slowing faster than the others, brake pressure to that wheel is reduced, allowing the wheel to speed up. As the wheel begins to spin faster, pressure is applied to slow it again. During acceleration, if the computer detects one or both front wheels rotating faster than the rear wheels, indicating a loss of traction, brake pressure is applied to the overspinning front wheel. A slip level of 5 to 20 percent typically provides the best acceleration. There are eight principal components in the system. The Electronic Brake and Traction Control Module, or EBTCM, is in a slide bracket mounted to the front bulkhead near the floor. The EBTCM is accessible after two air conditioning ducts are removed. The pressure modulator valve assembly, or PMV, is mounted in a rubber isolated bracket bolted to the left front frame rail. The PMV contains the valve assembly, an electric motor driven hydraulic pump, and a fluid reservoir with a fluid level sensor. The ABS pump relay and ABS main relay are also under the hood, mounted just below the maxi fuse center. Each front wheel speed sensor is pressed onto the inner side of the front hub and bearing assembly. The toothed ring is integral to the hub and bearing assembly. Each rear wheel speed sensor is mounted in a cap which is pressed into the inner side of the rear hub and bearing assembly. The toothed ring is inside the hub and bearing assembly. The EBTCM uses a signal from the transaxle temperature switch to determine whether to disable traction control. The switch connector is located on the front of the transaxle. The transaxle temperature switch is located near the bottom of the valve body inside the side cover. The cruise shift interlock brake switch and TCC anti-lock brake switch are mounted to a bracket above the brake pedal. The amber anti-lock indicator illuminates for two to four seconds during the bulb check at startup. The indicator illuminates continuously whenever the anti-lock brake system is disabled. The traction off indicator illuminates for a moment during startup. The indicator also illuminates whenever the traction control system is disabled. Traction control is completely dependent on proper operation of the anti-lock brake system. The main components involved in an ABS stop include the wheel speed sensors, the EBTCM, the PMV valve assembly, and the PMV pump motor. As a tooth approaches the sensor's permanent magnet and coil, an electrical current is induced in the coil. When the tooth passes, current decreases. When the wheel turns, the sensor produces an alternating or AC current that can be measured on a meter. The frequency increases in proportion to wheel speed. The EBTCM calculates each wheel's speed based on the AC signal frequency it receives from each wheel sensor. When the brake pedal is applied, the EBTCM checks the deceleration rate of each wheel. If a wheel begins to lock up during braking, the EBTCM enters anti-lock mode. In the anti-lock mode, the solenoid-controlled hydraulic valves modulate brake pressure in the individual brake circuits. By controlling the outlet and inlet valves, the EBTCM can adjust the rotation speed of a wheel by rapidly holding, decreasing, or applying brake pressure. 
A tire rolling on a road surface at a constant speed has approximately zero slip. In five revolutions, the tire would travel a given distance. To achieve a 20% slip level during deceleration, the vehicle must travel the distance of five tire revolutions while the tire actually rotates only four times. In practical terms, the vehicle is brought to the quickest stop possible while the driver maintains steering control. Whenever the vehicle moves, the EBTCM monitors all wheel speed sensor frequencies. If during acceleration below 25 miles per hour, one or both front drive wheels lose traction and begin to slip, the EBTCM recognizes the slip by an increase in the sensor frequency at the slipping wheel. In traction control mode, the pump motor and both isolation valve solenoids energize to generate hydraulic brake pressure to only the front brakes. The inlet and outlet valve solenoids are operated by the EBTCM to apply modulated braking pressure to the slipping wheels. Drive torque is transferred by the differential side and pinion gears to the opposite drive wheel, where better traction is utilized to move the vehicle. Traction control is maintained until the vehicle either exceeds 25 miles per hour or the driver uses less throttle to reduce slip. During operation, the pump and PMV can be heard and some vibrations can be felt. This is a normal condition and should not be diagnosed as a problem. However, if a customer comes in for service with either the anti-lock or traction off indicator or both illuminated, there may be a problem with the system. The indicators illuminate due to a code, an intermittent, or by symptoms that do not set codes. If, for example, a defective PMV fluid level switch remained open, even though fluid level was correct, no code would be stored. However, the anti-lock and traction off indicators would light and both systems would be disabled. The Tevis Mark IV system is relatively straightforward. Even so, up to 40 wires connect to the EBTCM. One loose wire can disable the system. Start with a complete visual inspection and perform every step. Don't shortcut the diagnostic procedure. The visual inspection is the quickest way to help you locate common problems. The next step is to perform a thorough functional check. This is essential for verifying the complaint. If there is a problem, the functional check directs you to anti-lock brake and traction control tests in the electrical service manual. For convenience, the know-how manual divides the visual inspection between two major areas, interior and exterior. Checking the interior first, test the park brake and brake warning indicator to ensure that the system functions properly. If the indicator doesn't light when the pedal is depressed, check the park brake switch connector. The connector may be loose or the wire may have backed out. If the brake indicator doesn't illuminate, Perform the park brake switch test W in the ESM. Now check the cruise shift interlock brake switch and the TCC anti-lock brake switch for loose connectors or wiring. Check the terminals to see if any have backed out or if any are corroded. Repair or replace any damaged terminals. Switch the ignition to run and check the number 6, 13 and 19 fuses. If a fuse doesn't read properly, remove it for a closer look. If it is actually blown, this is a sure indication that a wiring problem exists in the circuit it protects. That completes the interior inspection. Now check under the hood. First, check the master cylinder reservoir and PMV fluid levels. If the master cylinder reservoir is not full, check for leaks or worn linings. Make repairs before continuing. Check under hood fuses number 1 and 2. If a fuse is blown, this would definitely point toward a short to power or ground somewhere in the circuit. The ABS main relay is located under the maxi fuse center. The ABS main relay connections should be checked and repaired if needed. The ABS pump relay is next to the ABS main relay and is checked in the same manner. The connection to the master cylinder reservoir switch should be tight and the CPA lock installed. If not, check the terminals and reinstall the CPA lock.
The connection to the PMV reservoir switch should also be tight. The PMV has two main electrical connectors. Connector C1 has 14 terminals. Connector C2 has 5 terminals. Both connectors should be checked for possible loose or backed out terminals. The transaxle temperature switch terminal runs through the transaxle harness connector at terminal C. It should be checked for looseness. Each wheel speed sensor wiring harness and connector should be checked to be sure it is tight and clean. Connectors C400 for Park Avenue and C413 for LeSabre and C110 and C111 for both models should be checked for tightness and for loose terminals. Once a thorough visual inspection rules out any obvious causes, a system's functional check should be the next phase of your diagnosis. Start by switching the ignition to run. The anti-lock and traction off indicators should light for about two to four seconds, then go out. If they do not light or remain lit continuously, the ESM has a series of tests for these indicators. All 1992 and some 1993 models need a data line connector or DLC cover shunt assembly. The shunt prevents code 71 from setting. If the shunt is missing, install one. Switch the ignition off. Connect a scan tool. Switch the ignition on and enter the diagnostic mode. With the scan tool properly connected, if the system will not enter diagnostics, a problem exists in either the data line or the power and ground circuits to the ABS main relay or the EBTCM. Perform anti-lock indicator on fault test Q. Record any codes. Use the scan tool to clear the codes. Then exit diagnostics. Disconnect the scan tool. Switch the ignition off and wait 10 seconds. Switch the ignition back on. Connect the scan tool, enter diagnostics, and recheck for codes. Use this set of codes and the code reference guide to locate the appropriate test in the ESM. If the tool doesn't display codes, test drive the vehicle. With the shunt installed, drive above 25 miles per hour. Perform several ABS stops. The ABS vibration and characteristic brake pedal rise should be noticed. Perform several full throttle accelerations from rest to test the traction control system. When the traction control activates, the same type of ABS vibration and noise can be heard. If the traction control system has a fault, the traction off indicator will light. If the ABS system has a fault, the anti-lock and traction off indicators will light. Use the scan tool again to check for codes. If the indicators do not light but the car pulls during an ABS stop, perform the inlet outlet valve hydraulic test BB. If you get a code, use the code guide to perform the related test in the ESM. However, if code 71 resets and the DLC shunt is in place, Replace the EBTCM. Because many EBTCMs have been returned with only wheel speed sensor codes stored, the wheel speed sensor codes merit explanation. Wheel speed sensor codes are divided by wheel position and specific problem. The most common codes are 21, 25, 31, and 35. These codes are set by a failed sensor, an open, or a short to ground. The second set, 22, 26, 32, and 36, relate to erratic signals or to an intermittent. A test drive with a scan tool set in the snapshot mode can capture intermittents. Perform the test drive with the Tech 1 connected. Remember, ABS and traction control are unavailable when in diagnostics. Checking individual wheel speed sensor readings helps identify wheel speed sensor problems. The third set, 23, 25, 33, and 37, indicate that a hub and bearing assembly may be defective. If the toothed ring is mispositioned, loose, or if a tooth is broken, the only course of action is to replace the hub. Code 45 covers three areas, but basically flags major power losses. 
Like other specific codes, code 45 could mean that the left front inlet valve circuit has a problem. Code 45 is used for other purposes. If the ABS main relay or any of its circuits fail, or if the EBTCM loses either power or ground, code 45 will set. With the visual inspection and functional check complete, let's step through a test procedure. For example, suppose the scan tool revealed code 21, a failed right front wheel speed sensor, or an open or short to ground in the circuit. Place the transaxle in neutral and switch the ignition off. The sensor is easier to test, so disconnect it to check it first. Perform wheel speed sensor continuity test F. Set a digital volt ohmmeter to the ohms setting. Test the sensor at both terminals. Resistance should be 800 to 1500 ohms. Now move one lead to ground. The meter should read infinite resistance. While you're there, perform wheel speed sensor output test G. Next, select AC volts on the meter. The correct reading is between 50 and 90 millivolts AC when the wheel is turned slowly by hand. This sensor is OK. Reconnect the harness. The problem is either the wiring harness, one of the connectors, or is the result of a faulty EBTCM. Remove these air conditioning ducts for access to the EBTCM. Tape over the rear ventilation system duct to avoid losing screws into the duct. Disconnect the EBTCM. Connect the J38716 pinout box connector to the harness. Set a digital volt ohmmeter to the ohm setting. Connect the terminals of the digital volt ohmmeter to pins 19 and 45. The meter should again read infinite resistance. Now move the lead from pin 19 to pin 27. Normally resistance would be between 800 to 1500 ohms. Remember, the sensor is OK, so this reading will determine if the wiring is faulty. The reading shows infinite resistance, indicating that the wiring has either an open or a loose connection. Repair the wiring. If the fault is in a twisted pair section, replace the section of twisted pair wiring. Clear the codes, drive the vehicle above 25 miles per hour, and repeat the functional check. The know-how visual inspection quickly locates common problems. The functional check verifies the complaint and refers you to the appropriate test in the ESM. And be sure to read the section in the know-how manual on diagnostic tips. Following this practical approach will ensure that most traction control or anti-lock brake system complaints can be quickly diagnosed and repaired. <laughs>